From the mysteries of the deep to the power of human innovation, the future of our oceans is in our hands. Together, we can protect the oceans that sustain us all. Join me on a journey of discovery, innovation, and change. Let's create a future where our oceans are safe, healthy, and harmonious. This is Harmonious Oceans. What's up, ocean lovers? Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious Oceans. I'm Sid, and today we're going to be exploring the second letter of Harmonious, A, Accelerating Aquaculture Development. Why does it matter? What are the challenges and how can we be part of the solution? Let's find out. Overfishing is one of the biggest threats our ocean face today. Did you know that 34.4% of the world's fish are overstocked? That means we're taking out more fish than the oceans can naturally replenish, leading to fewer fish and less biodiversity. Overfishing doesn't just hurt fish populations, it disrupts entire ecosystems, and it impacts millions of people who rely on fish for food and income. Fish are one of the most traded food commodities globally, fueling a $362 billion industry. So, what can we do? Sustainable fishing is key. It means leaving enough fish in the oceans and protecting the habitats. If all fisheries were managed sustainably, we'd have 16 million more tons of fish a year, enough to feed 72 million more people. Okay, so what can we do to help? A lot, actually. Start by raising awareness. Share what you learn about overfishing and sustainable practices on social media. If you're into science or tech, consider studying marine biology or environmental science. The next big innovation might come from you. Now, let's hear from Dr. Ashkin, who's a business economist and researcher in sustainability tech-driven decision-making at Brunel Business School. His research expertise revolves around three key areas, innovation management, internationalization processes, and sustainability. Could you please share more about sustainable production and consumption and how the oceans can play a role in it to support this global challenge? Well, we all know that sustainable production and consumption involves creating and using goods and services in a manner that meets all current needs while ensuring the future environmental, economic, and, and social um, needs in, in the future. Yeah. Um, so the oceans here uh, in this context also play a crucial role in terms of sustainable production and consumption by producing, for example, um, protein sources, vital protein sources like fish, and recently we can see algae, for example, or other novel uh, resources are being investigated. And um, if you want to, to think about being more sustainable, so sustainable management of marine resources will ensure that these new resources are not necessarily all of them are new, but at least the resources from ocean remain available for future generations. Um, so uh, regenerative aquaculture or regenerative uh, production should be on the forefront of, of any initiative that we consider. Yeah. Um, another aspect, we can also think about oceans, how they contribute to the challenges um, that we are facing, like um, global pollutions. So oceans can act as carbon sink. They absorb a large amount of CO2, and hence they are helping to mitigate climate effect, climate change, and, and these kind of things. Yeah. Um, so if I want to summarize it, uh, ocean can produce food in a sustainable way, and also they are helping us to um, combat the climate change. So any activities, any, any initiatives that promoting sustainable fisheries or um, any fishing, sustainable fishing practices, um, or if you are attempting reducing uh, marine pollutions in different formats, uh, like the, for example, now we are facing with the uh, excess of uh, plastic materials are floating in the in the oceans and also uh, protecting marine biodiversity that's also important so those are different ways that we are uh, we are we, we are able to to support sustainable production and consumption related to oceans um, and following on from like fish fishing and sustainable fishing um 
Today, fish and fish products supply significant portions of daily intake of animal protein in many developing countries. So uh, which kind of policy changes do you think are needed at a global scale to promote aquaculture development for food security? There are a number of ways that we can think about the policies. Um, of course, regulation and, and monitoring is, is the key here. And of course, for more efficient regulatory and monitoring, we need more advanced technologies. For example, I'm working on a novel technologies recently uh, engaged with, for example, blockchain and AI for traceability uh, of, of fish products. These are examples, just an examples of, of how technology can be embedded for the better or efficient regulatory and monitoring. Of course, research and innovation is, is, uh, is another aspect that we need more support. We need more incentives for the researchers because, as, as I mentioned, for example, algae is, is one of the things that are being investigated heavily with lots of potential in, in food production, in industrial applications. But there are lots of other things that we can do uh, in terms of research, for example, I know that researchers in other European countries are working on, especially in Nordic countries, they are working on how we can move towards more circular economy in the in the blue economy, if you yeah. if you may, um, how we can retrieve more material, not only for uh, for for um, agriculture or or industrial applications, but also as food. There are some ingredients in in a uh, food quality that can be retrieved from the marine waste material so more research in these dimensions could could be helped and and uh, regulatory should should um, facilitate this new research agenda of course uh, aquaculture can play a, a, a substantial role here so any incentives or any uh, regulatory facilitations that increase the capacity be, capacity or 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 in extending the production lines in different formats in my opinion uh, maybe supporting a small scale farmers uh, would be a, a, a solution to that for capacity building for the aquaculture so um that would be another thing that we can consider of course it cannot be reached uh, without international collaborations. So we should make sure how we can encourage international collaboration and it requires uh, a substantial amount of uh, networking and um, making uh, a standard a standard way of communicating knowledge and technologies between different regions, how we can sync this data, how, how we can facilitate the tra tra trade across different borders and how, while we are maintaining the, the standards. Um, yeah, and, and finally, uh, maybe some other sort of incentives for, for, um, for making more sustainable production. Of course, we said about subsidies, but subsidies could be tailored for more eco-friendly technologies, more eco-friendly production and sustainable production. And of course, consumption side as well, not only supply, but also on the demand side, we can work on the um, awareness or increasing awareness of the consumers or how, how they, they can become a more um, sustainable citizens um, by changing, for example, different diets and and more diversified in terms of taking protein from plant-based proteins as well as aquaculture and many other resources, not only um, uh, not only uh, addresses the sustainable production consumption, but it might have a good uh, uh, a good impact for their uh, diet and health well-being. And you mentioned technology a while back. Um, could you please share more insight about how technology can pave the way forward? Well, there are lots of technologies that can um, can facilitate this process. Yeah. Um, recently, we are seeing the digi digitalization and especially AI or blockchain, yeah. digital twin. There are a number of technologies uh, that are helping in this direction. Um, I myself am working on AI and blockchain right now on the um, 
transparency and traceability of the food products. So with the, with the use of digital technology, we can have um, different data now easily in our in our hand about the origin quality, um, the journey that the, the product has has taken from farm to fork, mm. and and we, we can also make sure that all stakeholders can uh, can be aware of 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 yeah. all of this information. Um, and lastly, are there any simple steps that we can take to enhance food security without impacting our oceans? Well, we can do different way, different things as as supply as a supplier or as as consumers. Um, for example, uh, as a supplier, so definitely we discussed about technology and and the um, changes in the regulatory formats. Yeah. But as consumers, we can also think about, um, for example, changing our diet, um, opting for more sustainable source seafood. Um, like aquaculture, especially when we have now, for example, circular economy embedded in the aquaculture, um, that's 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 more sustainable. And also um, maybe reducing food waste. I, I mentioned some examples that uh, marine waste are now being used or utilized for extracting some material, marine material yeah. or or um, mineral material from from them, and. Um, and of course, key here, key key players here are, are smallholders, small, uh, small size farmers, or family size farmers, particularly for producing local or organic food. So um, perhaps they can exercise more environmentally friendly uh, practices in their in their operation. And um, yeah, and also. As a consumer, we can think about how we can diversify our diet, as I mentioned, yeah. taking more plant-based material and uh, also thinking about uh, other ways of consumption, like to moving towards more sustainable, more uh, locally produced food. Um, these are the things perhaps we can, we can help. As Dr. Ashkin mentioned, Many modern technologies and innovations in sustainable aquaculture are changing the game. Companies like Expert Sea use AI to monitor fish farms, helping to reduce environmental impact and boost efficiency. In fishing, smart tech like Pelagic data systems monitoring tools help reduce bycatch and illegal fishing, ensuring that fish populations stay healthy. Accelerating aquaculture development is vital for the future of our oceans. By supporting sustainable practices and embracing new technologies, we can protect marine life and our planet. Thanks for tuning in to Harmonious Oceans. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Keep the oceans in mind and keep them healthy. See you next time.